Hey, what is going on guys? This is SMEB Reviews and today we are taking a look at the debut album from Amy Shark, Love Monster. Let's get to it. I was exposed to Amy Shark from the Love Simon soundtrack with her song Sink In. I actually really did enjoy it. It wasn't anything too amazing, but I did enjoy it. I thought it was a pretty decent song. So when I saw she was coming out with a new album, I actually got uh, interested because I thought that she could have had potential and I was excited to see where she might go with it. And honestly, I'm really happy with Love Monster. Now, that's not to say this album's perfect. By any means, it is not. But for a pop album, for a debut pop album, this is pretty good. It mixes a lot of different styles. And honestly, Amy Shark has some pretty good pop sensibilities. She knows how to write music that's catchy, got a good hook, but yet still says something. Says something personal about her and is telling a story and is actually intriguing and interesting, not just a generic story about being in love or anything. She actually develops a story and talks about it. She gets introspective and it really, it's nice to see because it's re it's a refreshing style of pretty basic pop. I mean, you could argue this is indie pop, but it really just the sound of indie isn't really here. It really does just sound like mainstream pop. and it really, I'm okay with that because she works so well with this sound. Her voice is actually really incredible and has so many different styles. She can sing with a really rough voice as well as a really soft and beautiful voice. She does a lot with her voice and it really is good. Just another thing that adds on to how good her pop sound is. She can have such a clean voice or just a complete, completely gruff sounding voice. And I just love it. I love the different styles that she's able to create. In this album, yes, while the majority is just a pop sound, there are so many different sounds of pop. There's definitely folkier sounds or hip hop more leaning sounds. There's a lot of different takes on just the pop sound. And a lot of it sounds very nostalgic. When you listen to it, I get a lot of vibes of older music and a lot of sounds that remind me, especially of like that 2012 era of music where a bunch of of indie rock bands were making hits such as Fun or Neon Trees. And it really does remind me of that. It reminds me of the of a very simple sounding pop, something that kind of reminds me even a fight song by Rachel Platten, while I don't think that song is an amazing song, it's got a very, it has a very familiar sound about it. And it combines all of these sounds that I'm talking about. It combines the most mainstream pop sounds with, uh, yes, uh, there are some indie sounds. While I did say it's for traditionally, it is more traditional, just pop, it does have some of those indie sounds, some more alternative sounds, some hip hop, folk. It's got a lot, and Amy Shark's voice is something that can handle it, and her storytelling just adds to it and actually makes it intriguing instead of just another generic pop album like we're so used to seeing. Now, it does get a little weaker in the back half. Uh, you Think I Think I Sound Like God is an actually good song, but besides that, the last six tracks of the album are more or less throwaway. They kind of were just less interesting compared to the incredible hooks and sound of the first eight. And then again, besides You Think I Think I Sound Like God, which is incredibly introspective and really takes an interesting take. Just by the title, you can tell it's going to take an interesting take on just a, a different look at the world. And so, yeah, there are some more bland songs. Honestly, I think she has a really hard time knowing how to end songs. That's a weird complaint to have and one that I've never really had with us with an album before. I mean, every now and then there's a song that might sound weird, but I've never really complained about it as a whole because if, for the most part, most people don't even listen to songs all the way through. I mean, at least by the very end, they're kind of just zoning out. So it's not like it really matters, but it is something that actually stands out pretty substantially here. She just kind of... They, just end. It sounds like the the mix almost cuts off a couple seconds earlier than it should. It'll just kind of stop, and not in a way that uh, some songs aren't meant to just stop. But this these songs can kind of sound like they're going to keep going, and then they're just done. You you think that they're going to be another ver or another chorus, or maybe just a little outro, and it just suddenly stops and kind of even can sometimes cut off her words just sounding truly awkward and it's just one little thing i'm sure it it's obviously a nitpick but 
it is one thing that has to be said because it is a truly, it's a common occurrence in this album and one that I noticed multiple times. I said High is an excellent example of her really utilizing her voice. It may not be the most introspective or interesting lyrically, but musically it really is very interesting because it combines some very traditional instruments, actually organic instruments with more electronic sounds, whether it's a, it's a drum beat or some synthesizers, and honestly, it really meshes really well with this song, and uh, like I said, Amy Shark's vocals, it has a combination of her more straining sounds, where she's hitting the upper parts of her register, but still sounds really good, as well as her lower and softer parts, and it does sound, it, it, it's an excellent example of what works about this album, a really good pop album. I, it is a good pop album, it truly is, and like I said, she just has such a mind about it. She knows how to make a song truly interesting, but not too long, not too short, and just a perfect mix of slower songs and faster songs and of different styles, but really still making it all feel concise. Because as I said, it is tradition, it's just a traditional pop album, but some songs kind of lean more the genres I already named, hip hop, folk, or indie rock, or anything like that. They do kind of lean, but they tr definitely all stay standing tall in just a traditional pop, but a traditional pop that's really good. I do seriously enjoy this album, and like I said, there are about five, six songs that are rather bland and boring and uninteresting, but the other nine, those are pretty good songs. I really do enjoy them. Now, we do get one song where, it, where we get a, a feature. It's the only feature... And that's Mark Hoppus from Blink-182, and he is on Psycho. And Psycho's a little cheesy, I won't lie, it is a little cheesy. But honestly, their voices kind of mesh well. It, it's a weird combination, but one that actually kind of does work. And they create a really... It, it sounds like a slow Blink-182 song, but it still sounds like her. It doesn't really take away from her style, it just it definitely I could hear it being a slow Blink-182 song, just with the, the slower uh, guitar picking and that kind of thing. Regardless, it is still good. I do like it, like I said. The lyrics are a little more cheesy, but meh, it's fine. I do actually like that song. It And it just shows how even with cheesier lyrics, it still works. It still is a good pop album. I'm used to hearing pop albums with only cheesy lyrics and still not really the music to support it. For some reason, the one album that comes to my mind is Camila Cabello. And I just, while she had a couple good songs on her most recent release, it it's primarily a, a pretty cheesy and uninteresting pop album with uninteresting music. At least, no matter what in this album... Either the lyrics are really good or the music is. And the music throughout the whole album is pretty good. If anything, it's just uninspired rather than bad. But it's it still just has a lot of high points in this album. Don't Turn Around, Mess Her Up, and Middle of the Night are three specific songs that just really don't stand out. They don't say anything. It's pretty generic pop songs that have electronic beats and really don't do anything. I just, I'm uninterested by those songs. But even then, they're not bad, they're just fine, and that's just another example. It's a pop album that just really never dips down into a bad song. I really didn't expect to like this album as much as I do, but I do really have a ton of respect for Amy Shark. As I said, her voice, her lyrics, her music is just interesting and intriguing, and as a pop album, it's good, and honestly, it's still good in the context of music. It's not just a good pop album, it's a good album. I really do like it. It's not like album of the year material, it's nothing like that, it doesn't dig deep enough, it doesn't innovate enough, and it doesn't do anything truly different, it just is good. It's a really good listen that I do recommend, and I do like it. So, yeah, I really did like this album, so even though it's not perfect, it has its flaws, I'm still going to have to give this album a 7.5 out of 10. And boy, is it really close to an 8, I really, really do enjoy this album. But enough of what I think. What do you guys think? Please let me know down below. Also, is there anything I can do to improve the quality of my videos or anything that you'd like me to check out coming out soon? I'm really sorry for the kind of hiatus I've had. I've It's just not really much music is coming out right now that interests me. I know Wiz Khalifa had a big album, but I just I could not bring myself to listen to 20 to 25 tracks of Wiz Khalifa. I just couldn't do it. I, <laughs> I'm getting really busy because I just started a new job. It, it's just been a busy time for me, but I'm definitely still with it. I just 
had to take a little break. But let me know if there is anything coming out, because I believe next week we'll be getting more, so good on that. Um, also, check out my Twitter. I review albums that I maybe didn't have time to do a formal video on, because I will actually check out Wiz Khalifa's album. I haven't yet, but I will. And I'll probably post my thoughts on it on Twitter. So, yeah, go follow me on Twitter, SMAV Reviews, also the link's in the description. Besides that, thank you guys so, so much for watching. It really does mean a lot, and I'll see you guys later.